I always make my husband a special breakfast for Valentine's Day. And just to make this Valentine's Day a bit more fun, I thought I would recreate the role of a 1950s housewife. A friend of mine had sent me an extract from a 1950 home economics book and it talked about how to look after your husband and I thought it was hilarious and I just wanted to recreate that role just a little bit for that one particular day and I thought I would share it with all of you. And this video is brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. So I decided to do it not only for Valentine's Day, but also on a day when I'm doing my weekly home blessing. So there's quite a few things that I'm already doing in the home. But let me share with you a few of the instructions that were given in the extract. The first tip was to have dinner ready. So they said to plan ahead, even the night before, so you'd have a delicious welcoming meal for your husband when he comes in. The second tip was to prepare yourself. You're to take 15 minutes to freshen up, to relax, maybe just to kind of regroup so that you're in a good frame of mind when he comes in the door. It also says be a little gay or a little interesting since he's been with boring work people all day. Tip number three is to clear away the clutter. So you're to make one last pass through the house, tidy up everything so that when he comes in, everything is nice and clean. And then you're also to prepare the children. So take a few minutes to wash their face, their hands, make sure they're tidy and clean so that when he comes in the door and he's ready to see them, they're the pictures of the little treasures that they are. And that's what it says. It says they are little treasures and he would like to see them playing the part. The other tip is to minimize all noise. So at the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise. Dishwasher, washer, dryer, noisy children, that kind of thing because he's been stressed all day at work. So he's got to have it peaceful and quiet when he comes home. So you've got to minimize the noise so that he can relax and you're going to be gay to greet him. Don't greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain if he's late for dinner. Count this as minor compared to what he's been dealing with throughout the day. The next tip is to make him comfortable. Have him lean back in a comfortable chair or suggest that he lie down and take a nap while you get dinner on the table. The other thing you should do is to have a cool or warm drink ready when he comes in and maybe arrange a pillow or maybe offer to help him take off his shoes. And speak in a low and soothing tone of voice which allows him to relax and unwind. Now he knew that I was going to pamper him, so he slept in a little bit longer than he normally would. And I got up earlier and I put on some of my prettiest loungewear and I put up my hair and I put on my face. I wanted to be as presentable as possible for this special day. And for this particular breakfast, or shall I say brunch, I am making shrimp and grits. It's a recipe that I found on a YouTube channel called Smokin' and Grillin' with AB and it's absolutely amazing. It's really easy to make and it tastes delicious. I'll link his channel in the description box below so that you can check him out but I'll cue you as to what I'm doing when and what ingredients I'm putting in and that kind of thing. So the first thing I did was to cut and chop my green onions. I used three but you can use more if you like. You will also need three tablespoons of fresh parsley. I picked some up at Kroger since I had none growing at this time of the year. Next, I put my bacon on to fry. I wanted it to be on the softer side of crisp. Not too soft, but not too hard. Once the bacon was done, I put three cups of chicken broth into a pot and then put my biscuits into the oven. We like the Grand Rounds brand, they're usually soft and buttery. Once the chicken broth came to a boil, I poured in one cup of quick cooking grits. These are the grits that take about five minutes to cook. They are not 
instant grits. And then you want to stir the grits continuously so they don't stick. When the grits get to the consistency that you like, add three tablespoons of butter, add a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper if you like pepper in your grits. Once the grits are cooked through and you've got the texture that you like, add two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. It's probably easier if you add the cheese one cup at a time, but it's okay if you add both cups at once. The big thing is you just wanna make sure that you stir it thoroughly so that the cheese is mixed all the way through. Give it a taste, and if all is to your liking, cover it and set it off the heat. Now it's time to cook the shrimp, and we're gonna use the bacon grease that's already in the skillet to cook and season the shrimp. Add one tablespoon of Creole seasoning, three teaspoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, some of the parsley that you chopped earlier, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and give it all a good stir. After two or three minutes, flip the shrimp over and let it cook from the other side. And you can add the rest of the parsley at that time. When it's cooked all the way through, take it out of the skillet and set it aside. Then you're gonna crumble up your bacon. Now it's time to plate it up. Now sometimes when I'm cooking, I get so focused on one thing that I get distracted and forget about something else. So there was a mishap with the biscuit. All right, so dear. What are those? <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> I was so busy focusing on the shrimp and the grits, and then when I was cooking the shrimp, I forgot I had the biscuits in the oven. So that's why we ended up with English muffins. Well, I had a lot of fun putting together this 1950s housewife video and when I think about it the things that I did that represented the 1950s housewife is not a lot different from the things that I do today other than the fact that I don't rush around and try to put on a fresh dress when the mister is coming home and you know bring out a tray full of drinks and that kind of thing to um, help him relax when he comes in the door. I was a 1970s housewife and I didn't do that then and it's something that I certainly don't do now but there are some things that I do differently than I did early on and actually my mother was a 1950s housewife and I remember very well the kind of things that she did and she was home with us until she took a job and went out to work but she took a job on the night shift so that she was there in the morning when we got up to go to school. She was there when we came home from school and she was able to catch a little bit of sleep during the day while we were away, but then also took care of whatever household duties she had to do sometime between the hours of, you know, while we were away at school, we didn't always see what she did. And then once we got old enough to help, we started taking on more responsibility in the home. And my husband's story is somewhat similar. His mom was a 1950s housewife and she was home for the most part. And when she did take a job outside of the home, she worked at a laundry and so she went to work very early. So by the time she went out to work, she had some older daughters who helped get the younger kids off to school, but she was home by three o'clock. So they had dinner every evening at four o'clock. And I remember when we got married, one of the things that he expected was early dinner, like dinner at four o'clock. And I'm like, there is no way on this green earth that I'm gonna make dinner every day at four o'clock. We always had dinner between five and 5.30. So that was what I considered to be dinner time. And I realized that what you bring from your own home environment 
colors what you expect in your new home when you become married and then set up your own household. So that is something quite interesting. And I think I'll probably do a video where I talk about that and expectations of today's brides and that kind of thing. Now my grandmother was a true 1950s housewife, 1940s and 1930s housewife, and she never worked outside the home. And I remember I always saw her in an apron. When she was in the home and doing any kind of work around the home, she always had on an apron. And she always served my grandfather. When it was time for meals, he would sit down at the table and she would bring everything that he needed. She would bring the salt, the pepper, the bread, everything, set it down the table in front of him. He would sit down and then once he was served, she'd sit down and she'd have her meal with him. And we did the same thing for my dad when I was a young girl because as I said, my mom was a 1950s housewife and that was the way she operated in our home. When it was meal time, uh, dad sat down at the table, we brought everything out, and then we all sat down once he was served and then we all sat down, but the kids had to sit in the kitchen and eat, and there were six of us, so the six of us sat in the kitchen for our meal, but mom and dad had their meal together in the dining room. So when I got married, I wanted the family to all eat together and so we sat down as a family and there was five of us at that time well, and there was five of us so we all sat down and had dinner together and even today we still eat most of our meals together every now and then he might sit in front of the TV or sit in his chair in front of the TV and have something on a tray but for the most part we eat most of our meals together and that's something that I pretty much have insisted on and I think it helps to build better communication. I find this whole trend of showing life as a 1950s housewife to be quite interesting because what I know from what I've read, what I've learned, what I've heard from some family members is that many times the 1940s and the 1950s housewives had help in the home. So all the things that you see on those lists of tasks and chores that was done by the 1950s housewife many of them had help in the home. And as far as my family members, they tended to be the ones that were the help in the home. So when they left that home, they had to come over to their own homes and then take on the responsibilities there as well. So whereas for some people, it might have been an easier and more pleasant time for others, not so much. Another thing that I find very interesting about the roles and tasks of the 1950s housewife is the mopping of the floors. Sweeping the floors, using the vacuum cleaner, and mopping the floors. Well, in my home, and my mom, as I said earlier, was a 1950s housewife, the women didn't mop the floors. My father and my brother mopped the floors. My mom always said that to use those heavy ring mops where you had to kind of squeeze them out in a bucket, she said that was too heavy for a woman to do. So us girls didn't have to mop the floors. My father and my brother mopped the floors. And as a matter of fact, all my brother had to do was take out the garbage and mop the floors. And the same thing transpired in my husband's home. He and his brothers mopped the floors, and he and his brothers took out the trash. But the girls did the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and that kind of thing. They didn't take out the trash, and they didn't mop the floors, but they did everything else. And as I got older and learned to manage a home, me and the sister that's right under me, by the time we were in high school, we could run an entire household. We could cook, clean, do laundry, the whole nine yards. So we were taught how to be housewives and how to manage a home as we got older. But it just really just kind of worked my nerves that all my brother had to do was take out the garbage and mop the floors. So that's why when I would watch commercials and I would see the white women on the commercials mopping the floors, I would be like, well, why are they mopping the floors? Women don't do that. Well, I've since learned that in other families, women did do that. And then one other really interesting thing that I find when I look at the comparisons of um, homes and maybe even cultures 
is the making of breakfast. Now, my mom made us breakfast and when we got older, we began to make our own breakfast. And typically we had hot cereal like oatmeal and cream of wheat and that kind of thing because cold cereal was quite expensive whereas hot cereal was less so. And the same thing went in my husband's family. But I remember once I was talking to one of my sister-in-laws. I had gone to visit for whatever reason and her husband was making breakfast and the kids were in the kitchen with them. He was making pancakes and that kind of thing. And it turns out she said, well, he always makes breakfast. His dad used to make breakfast. Well, I got to thinking about that. And I remembered as we were young homemakers, when I was working and we had to get the kids ready in the morning and get them out to school, I would get the kids ready and my husband would make breakfast. And then it dawned on me, his dad made breakfast at home. So because he saw his dad make breakfast, he made breakfast for us. And even to this day, when the kids come home to visit, he'll make breakfast and it's usually something kind of special. He'll also make them a fish fry, but breakfast is one of the things though, that they always remember him doing. He always makes breakfast. I typically do a load of laundry first thing in the morning every day, Monday through Thursday, sometimes Monday through Friday. But according to the extract from the 1950s home economics book, if you don't have the laundry done early, then don't run the washer, the dryer, the dishwasher, that kind of thing later in the evening because you don't want to disturb your husband with the noise. He should be able to enjoy the tranquility of the home that you've been experiencing all day. I had a lot of fun putting together this 1950s housewife video for you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did putting it together. And I realize it's been probably a little long and maybe I've talked a little bit more than I should. And I realize this is probably a show all on its own. I'll do some more 1950s housewives kind of things. I've ordered a few dresses that I'm looking forward to wearing. So, oh, and speaking of clothing, I'm really loving this dress. It's just really cute. I like the little A-line flare of it. I probably should have a crinoline under it, which I've ordered one, but it hasn't come in yet. But when I think about the clothing that I saw my mom and her sisters wear, they didn't tend to wear those kind of bell-shaped Dolores kind of swing skirts. They didn't tend to wear those. They tended to wear more of the pencil skirts, the pencil dresses, what I have since learned are called wiggle skirts. They tended to wear those kinds of things. So I do have one of those that I plan on wearing for a video that's coming up soon. So be sure and stay tuned for all of that. To learn more about making and keeping a home, click here. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying, you're not done yet. Click on the link in the comment section below and check out my video on how to keep towels soft and fluffy. And don't forget to visit us at www.aprendiva.com.